Riding with the Rabbi. Hello everyone, we're back with a, another episode of Riding with the Rabbi. Uh, we have a full car today. This is very, very exciting and this is a special episode in honor of our Shul Barbecue, where we are, of course, honoring Jane and Mark Wolf. And look who we have in the car. What are the chances? <laughs> Rachel, Stephen, Daniel, Andrew, oh my gosh. The hardest part about this was actually getting all together. So I gotta give big, uh, big props to uh, Andrew for making it happen. How's everybody doing? We're doing great. Good. Doing so what, great. you know what, maybe people, not everybody knows who you are, especially since the two of you, I can't tell you apart, I'll be honest. Do you get that a lot, by the way? Steven and Daniel, do you get that a lot? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so then I don't feel as bad. I get confused with Andrew a lot, too. Okay. Well, that's just unfortunate. But, um, <laughs> so tell me, wait, so tell, let's, let's go in age order. Who's the oldest? So I'm the oldest. I'm 29. Uh, yeah, working with Pops in the real estate business. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was it, was How difficult was the interview process? You know, <laughs> you know, it was tough. It was a tough, tough couple of questions, but you know. Uh, family, some... bi family business can't be tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you're 29. Um, wait, so when do we start like, you know? <laughs> no, that's not, I, I, just, I, not, that's not yeah, this conversation. No, I'm, I'm, no it's, I get it, it's... Uh, my biological clock is ticking. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, Daniel, at twenty-seven, two years younger than Stephen. I also work in our family business in the real estate. And do you feel like do you feel like he paved the way for you? A little bit. Um, yeah. It's been it's been it's been about nine months now. It's been, it's been good so far. So. How many times have you had to go to HR? Um, uh, I went to HR <laughs> once, my first day. Okay, that's a good yes. sign. Okay, okay. And Rachel? Um, Rachel, twenty. I'm 24. Um, I'm a teacher right now, but I'm done next week. And then on to law school at Cardozo in August. Okay, so this that's is... That's the newest that, that's a very That's a very modest answer. <laughs> so, wh where were you teaching? Were you teaching in, in I was Newark <laughs> Academy? Were you teaching in the Dalton School? I was... Were you <laughs> teaching in Horace Mann? Where were you teaching? Horace Mann. <laughs> Um, I was teaching in Patterson, not too far, like 20 minutes away. Patterson, New Jersey? Patterson, New Jersey. Uh -huh. It was a great experience. Okay. I'm really glad I did it. That was Teach for America, right? Teach for America, okay. yeah. And do you feel like you taught America? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. But okay. I'm, I'm happy I did it, but glad to be moving on to the next thing. Okay. And then, yeah. are you excited for law school? Yeah, I'm excited for the summer break is the biggest thing, and then we'll... I'll get there when right. I get there. Because L1 is the hardest year, right? They yeah. Say, uh, a lot of reading. That's what Daniel told me. Uh, <laughs> wait, did you both go to law school? I, I also went to Cardozo. I finished about a year ago now. Mm -hmm. I love the, Rachel on my notes. Love the <laughs> Yeshiva University connection. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah. come back to that maybe. And then, oh, Tatala, the baby, <laughs> the baby, the family, Andrew, who for the, you know, first time I've seen him is not wearing a cast or a sling or a crutches <laughs> or something, right? You're like an old man. Um, and you're you're in what year in college now? I'm going to be a junior at Vanderbilt. Junior, what are you studying? History and business minor. History and business minor. Okay, how do you like Vandy? It's a good time, great city, great <laughs> Jewish community. Yeah, do you have a podcast there? I do, yeah. yeah I, I, I've seen it. Um, okay, so this, this event that, you know, which I'm sure is probably one of I guess many that you have been a part of or that you certainly have known about where your parents are being honored and your parents do like I don't know how they have the time a physical time in the day to do what they do and yet they still do and they do so um, what your so like where do you think they get that energy from anybody feel free to grab it I'd say probably both of their parents my mom's parents and my dad's parents I think it's still that and them and now us. Um, but other than that, I think they both get a little tired of not doing something. Like they get bored within five seconds, I'd say. So they always have to keep busy and I think it's good to keep busy with good things. Right. Uh, anyone else? Other comments? I think that's it's, a good answer. I mean, they, <laughs> I think they, they are who they boys are and girls. Okay. Parents, yeah. So. yeah. And you to ask Rachel's it. point, they're always on, moving 100 miles an hour. So. <laughs> Right. need to constantly doing things in a good way though. Do you feel that that puts pressure on you? Let me ask you, is it more of pressure on you or is that just an unbelievable example for you to follow? I would say example. Um, 
when I think of my my when I think about my dad's mom, she's always just so proud of my dad, whatever he does, and even to see how he serves the Jewish community after seeing that my grandparents escaped the Holocaust, I think is really the greatest show of action that my parents could do. And I think my parents aren't doing it um, for us to be a certain person, but that's just how they want to raise us and that's how they want to live their lives and that's by serving the Jewish community and that's that is, that's, that's the way we can protect ourselves and that's I'd say the biggest thing I've learned. So your your grandmother, who's awesome by the way, I love talking there always, <laughs> and she said to me when when your dad went to Ukraine, you know, to, to, to next door to Ukraine, and she said, you know, when we left, when we left, when we were kicked out, there was nobody there, right? And here's, he says, my son is saving Jews can you believe that? And we're fleeing persecution in, in Eastern Europe. So, uh, you know, kind of this full circle, you might call that a bit of tikkun, a bit of kind of repair. Um, do you ever feel, and I, I look, I know Andrew better than the rest of you just because of, you know, the time that I've been here and the, and the time we spent together when he was having his bar mitzvah. Uh, but one thing I noticed is that you guys handle, I guess, I mean, like it or not, you're going to have a certain pressure on you I guess because of the name on your back so to speak and you guys handle that very well to, to what do you attribute that that class I, I think that speaks to the way our parents raised us I mean they it's been instilled in us to act a certain way and it's, it's almost second nature to I feel to be in that act in that manner so because it's not it's not, it's not easy. really a thought to, uh, to do a certain thing or not it's almost it's, yeah. Right, yeah, because that, that, that is not easy um, at all. And did you guys, let's say the two of you are in the business now, did you always know that you're going to go into it? Or did you ever think of doing something else? Did you want to go into it? Or uh, I think it always been in the back of my mind that at some point I would get into it. I didn't know when it would happen. I didn't know how, but I knew at some point I was going to. I think that's mm -hmm. at least my answer. Rachel, you have any aspirations for the family business? Um, not right now. <laughs> okay. Not right now. You never know. Right. Um, right now, I'm thinking criminal law. So hopefully not. No, not really. Hopefully not. Um, Which side of it? Public defender. So. So I, I yeah. can I would I dare say that maybe your experience in the last year or so is that contribute to that? Decision? Um, I think I always knew I was going to teach in the law school. Um. I was I took the LSAT senior year of college, so it was it was before. Uh, my cousin really? Ilana is a public defender, um, right. so I shadowed her and inspired me to actually do it. But you know, I got three years of law school ahead of me to see for real what I'm gonna do and all that. Mm -hmm. You never know. Okay, okay. And Andrew, what about you? Any thoughts about? Or it's just you know. Yeah, I, I, there's always a thought like in the back of my mind, but right now I just gotta focus on this summer and then next semester maybe where I want to study abroad and then I think just really saying yes to every opportunity that's there and just experiencing everything and having an open mind that's cool I'm not like set in on anything yet will you but ever be a better golfer than your older brothers <laughs> I probably need like my third surgery and a lot of practice <laughs> But, so you're, uh, you're starting it's, it's with the, looking, making, it's looking like an uphill battle. You're making excuses already. Is that, yeah, is that what I'm it'll, be, it'll be tough. It'll be tough. Um, is it true? Did I hear this correctly? I have, I have, and my my people tell me that the two of you one year, maybe in this, was it in the same year, won the club championship, one in Hollywood and one in Mountain Ridge. Is that true? No, not quite. So I have full information. I, I have never won the club championship. Daniel won each of them once. I think in consecutive years, if I'm not mistaken, two, two, two years, two years apart. apart. Yeah. But last year we both lost to the same guy. I lost in the semis, and Stephen lost in the finals. Uh -huh. Maybe yeah, that could so be you, the story. Do you ever play each other? We haven't. We were close enough. a We've couple times, close. right? We've been one match away, and it's mm -hmm. never happened. Do you blame Rachel? A, a little bit, but because your mom not, plays, right? She does, yeah. but I I need to get back into it, but not really right now. You'll have plenty of time next year. Oh, lots of time. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, so let me let me shift gears a little bit. So obviously this is the um, the Eitz Chaim dinner. What is your what what are your your feelings or your memories or you know, I don't know if you, I have pictures. We're going to actually be showing them 
at the, tonight at the dinner that um, of the shul dedication. When this building was dedicated, of course, with your family name on it, and there's a picture of uh, Stephen and Daniel, like a little boy, sitting next to your father. Huh. In um, the old shul. No, no, and when, and we, when, we, when we dedicated, yeah. Do you, so do you remember when this was built? Do you remember that? I, I do, because I, I remember it was right around the time of my bar mitzvah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I that, that makes sense, that. yeah, about 16 years, so yeah. yeah. I remember the remembering the big shift between the house and the and where Shul used to be, and the kind of the lack of space when the, when, you know, when the member, when there were so many more members, and I remember, you know, just n moving from, we had like the child, the children's area, but it was really, really small at the house, and then moving to the, to, to where we are now, just that right. huge basement that yes. we used to go to. I remember that shift. Um, it was pretty great. It's funny what you encode yeah. as like as a kid when like you know what to, what does it mean to you? So, um, and Andrew, I guess you've only known kind of this. Yeah, definitely. Um, right. Um, <laughs> my my memories, great memories. Your bar mitzvah, where I had to great pull. Great runs. Yes, but I had to pull quite a few <laughs> strings, and I had to make sure that on a tent outside in the parking lot that there was snow. It was March. Right. Like March 6th or something was your bar mitzvah. I had to make sure that we had snow on top of the tent in March, which was not easy to do, but you know, <laughs> even Debbie and Stacy couldn't pull it off, but I, I, I managed to pull it off. Um, so where do you, where do you, I, I remember um, a bunch of years ago, I was invited to um, Crystal Plaza to a luncheon, and it was the 50th anniversary of the foundation. I don't know if you remember that or if you were there. Um, you might not have been there. I guess might have been in school still. And yeah. what, what, what I found to be so telling, I, maybe you guys don't even know this, is that the honorees for celebrating the 50th anniversary, by the way, when your family had a foundation before, no, nobody had a foundation, right? And the honorees were the beneficiaries of the foundation. So I was sitting next to the dean of the NY, NYU Law School, I think, and, and next to the curator of the Jewish Museum, I don't know. And I'm, I, I, that said so much to me that your family, when it was their turn to be recognized, all they wanted to do was recognize others. Um, and, you know, in this preparing, like for our shul, you know, your, your parents in such a, a, a generous and humble way, they just, they want, look, what we want to do what's right for the shul, it's never about us. You know, we, we have our, we call this the anti-dinner. Like, if anybody wears a tie, we throw them out, and it is like a very short program, and you know, like, do you want us to change anything? No, keep exactly the same. So, um, that, that to me says so much about your parents, and I guess that's the example that you have to follow, and I see it, by the way, how you guys carry yourselves the same way. Um, do you, do you think that that's a learned behavior, or is that sort of just, you, either you got it's like being cool, like either you are or you're not. <laughs> um, Steven? I think, I feel like my siblings would agree that we were always taught, um, I think, first of all, I think a lot of this stuff, my parent, our par my parents, I'm thankful to say, didn't really tell us a lot of the stuff of what they had, but they told us that we had a very special opportunity. And we're in a very special position that you had to carry yourself a certain way to do it. And I think that that was taught to us from a very young age. And I think that that could be part of the reason why. That's that's the key. So we have a saying in Hebrew. Um, the word in Hebrew to give, v'natanu, is one of the many places it appears in the Torah. V'natanu is a palindrome. So when you're giving, you're actually, it's you're getting and giving, giving is, is, first of all, it is a learned behavior, but it's a, it's a privilege in that God gives you uh, a certain gifts so that you can see, see how he, he gives you like a fund to manage. He wants to see how do you manage that fund, right? Um, so anything, anything you guys want to say to your parents on uh, specifically as it relates to Eitz Chaim, as we celebrate, can you believe 25 years, 25 years, God willing, we'll have 25 more great years. Anything you want to say to your parents on their special day? Not all at once. Just, you know, just <laughs> not. I, I would just say, going back to what we were talking about before, is it was when, when you asked, was it subconscious or was it taught? I 
think it, it was a bit of both. And I think that just goes to maybe the way my parents were taught and both my mom and dad. And when we think about what tonight is gonna mean, I think it's gonna mean just this community is what comes first. And at the end of the day, at times about the people, the building's great, everything's great, but it wouldn't be what it is without you, Rabbi. And I think that's what my parents oh, really- Oh, go on. Really <laughs> So yeah, well said, in. Oh, I like that, you see? That's exactly how we skip it. Mazel Tov, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Mazel Tov. Yes, and, and Mazel Tov and getting it all together on a, on a weeknight. Yeah. Uh, what a Herculean, effort and task and accomplishment. Uh, Jane and Mark, thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, but I think perhaps your greatest, greatest accomplishments and your greatest success are all sitting here in the car with me right now. Uh, may you continue to see these blessings flourish for many, many, many years to come. And as I've said on many occasions, may we continue to be the beneficiaries of the blessing that God has given you and you continue to share with everyone else. So everybody have a great, great evening. Thank you so much. And we will see you again here next time, Riding with the Rabbi.